Well, I just got a response from Elder Dan Jackson, the president of the North American Division. For those who haven't been following my videos, I have been sending letters to the leaders of the Adventist Church, both in the GC, NAD, and around the world, asking for biblical evidence to support our pro-abortion position. I have written now well over 900 letters, and at least six of those letters went directly to President Dan Jackson. And so far, this is my first response from him. You may remember that last month, my letter asked the question, according to our official statement on euthanasia, why is it wrong to deliberately kill someone who is sick and dying, but it's okay to deliberately kill a little boy or girl in their mommy's womb? Why do we oppose physician-assisted suicide for the terminally ill senior citizen, but support physician-assisted murder of the terminally ill or perfectly healthy unborn child. So this letter is what Dan Jackson is responding to, and in this video we are going to look at his letter. The purpose of this video is to understand more of how leaders in the Adventist Church, especially in North America, respond to these questions. And as you read his response, remember two things. Keep these two things in mind. Over and over and over again, the top two responses that I have received and others have received from leaders is, number one, it's not my responsibility, go ask someone else. And number two, I'm personally pro-life, or Andrew, I'm personally against abortion. With that in mind, let's check it out. Dear Brother Mitchell, it's actually Michelle, but anyways, Dear Brother Mitchell, this is a response to your question about euthanasia and abortion. I do appreciate your concern for unborn children. Know that I too share the same concern. I do respect life. Regarding your request, I would refer you to Dr. Peter Landless of the GC Health Ministries Department. Thank you for including the church leadership in your prayers, your brother in Christ, President Daniel Jackson. Okay, so first of all, I want to say thank you to President Jackson for this response. Thank you very much for taking the time to write this letter. A positive sign in this letter is that President Jackson defines the unborn as children. He doesn't call them placental tissue or contents of the uterus, which is the dehumanizing hate speech and rhetoric used by Adventist healthcare. This is odd because Adventist healthcare is part of the North American division. Anyways, moving on. This is also very interesting because he also does not follow the guidelines in using the phrase pregnancy. He calls them children just as the Bible does. This is very encouraging but also confusing because it gives the same response as other leaders. It's not my responsibility. Go talk to someone else. In this case, Dr. Peter Landless of the GC Health Ministries. This is very confusing because the GC Health Ministries is on record showing support for the pro-abortion position and the GC Health Ministries says that abortion is the intentional termination of an established pregnancy. They are very careful on abortion never to call the unborn a child or baby. They always refer to the human child as a quote pregnancy because saying the intentional termination of a child or the intentional termination of a son or daughter or baby girl or boy would reveal the true nature of abortion. Such phraseology is needed if one wants to name things without calling up mental pictures of them. Now just stop and think about this. Here is the president, the president of the North American division who can't or won't give a Bible answer to this question. This is the exact same president who said this. You see, as Seventh-day Adventists, we have been known as the people of the book. The people of the book. I'm not asking a question about health. I'm asking a Bible question. I specifically wrote right here, I am requesting from you Bible texts that grant our Adventist church the authority to support the deliberate violent attack on little children in their mommy's womb. And a second time, I would like scriptures from the written word of God that give authority to dismember children alive. I'm not asking to be referred to a doctor. I don't need a doctor. I need answers from the book. President Jackson said that we are people of the book. So I asked the very president of the people of the book and he doesn't even cite the book. No, he refers me to someone else. To my friends who are watching this video, I hope that by now you can see that nobody wants to touch the abortion question because nobody can support it. This is the president and he doesn't even have one text, not even one scripture, but instead he just passes the buck. Second, 
Just like everyone else, he says, I do appreciate your concern for unborn children. Andrew, know that I too share the same concern. I do respect life. Again, I want to state this again. I am very thankful for this letter. This is the communication that we want. However, all you have to do is substitute the word abortion for child molestation or child rape. And it looks like this. Andrew, I do appreciate your concern for children being violently raped until they are bleeding and screaming. Know that I too share the same concern, but it's not my responsibility to do anything. Please go talk to someone else. This is simply unacceptable because Dad Jackson is the president. He's the president, especially the president of the most pro-abortion division of the Worldwide Adventist Church. Dr. Ronald Lawson in page 19 of his paper presented here at the meeting of the Society for the Scientific Study of Religion stated about the pro-abortion position of our church, quote, since most of the committee members were Americans and the few foreign-born members were all residents of the U.S., discussions had an American flavor. And on page 30, quote, this was an American committee speaking for for a world church where opinion ran much more strongly against abortion than in the U.S. It was his division. It was the North Americans that brought child murder into our church. If he, in fact, shares the same concern, then why has he said and done nothing about our pro-murder position in over eight years? It's now 2018. Jackson became president in 2010. That was eight years ago, and there is not one word from him anywhere so much as even questioning the biblical authority to deliberately murder little boys and girls in their mommy's womb. President Dan Jackson has had the position, the power, the resources, and the authority to do something about this, and he has done absolutely nothing. And he himself has made strong statements about hurting children. Here's just one example. Because when a woman or a child has been subjected to abuse by another person, the covenant of trust has been broken. Or a child has been subjected to abuse by another person. The covenant of trust has been broken. And right here, the NAD stated, when condoning evil, silence becomes a crime. And it's specifically referring to violence against children. Now, I want to prepare you for something. I have had several experiences that many people in the NAD, especially church leaders, when confronted with child murder and when confronted by their own silence, they will try to spin the issue and say, but what about poor children that don't have any food? What about children without schooling? What about the neglect of born children? What about the abuse of children even in our own church, etc., etc.? They will list off all of these groups of unfortunate children who suffer and make a comparison to unborn children. But the important point, this is the key point to remember, is that the Adventist church does not officially support these. But the Adventist church does in fact support this. We do publicly and officially support violently attacking and murdering children in their mother's womb. Regardless of how you feel about Elder Daniel Jackson, he is the president of the church in North America, and his decisions, his words and actions have a very real effect in leading people to make decisions for eternal life or eternal death. My friends watching this video, I want to invite you to join me in praying for Dan Jackson and pray that God will have his hand on the North American division to lead us away from supporting child murder. This matter is simply too serious. The stakes involved here are huge, far beyond just the NAD. We are at the center of the great controversy, and we desperately need God to be involved, leading our church to repent of the sin. So please, in a few seconds, this video will come to an end. Would you please, at the very least, bow your head and take a moment to pray that God will help us. Therefore, I exhort first of all that supplications and prayers be made for all men, especially for those who are in authority. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all men to be saved and for the Adventist church to come to the knowledge of the truth about abortion.